Hey horse lovers, welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. So in today's video, we are gonna do an update on all nine of my horses. There have been so many new horse lovers who have joined the channel, so I just wanna take you around, introduce you to all of the horses, talk about them, but also give you an update on what my plans are for them. We'll also talk about each horse's pros and cons, their breed, age, height, and all of that fun information about them. So what we're gonna do is head out to the paddock and hang out with the horses. Let's go. I had to put sunglasses on because it's super bright out right now but thank goodness we prepped for winter because winter came we actually got a decent amount of snow probably around three inches but it's melting now because it's warming up a little bit mucky michigan okay let's head to the paddock i always slip through the fence instead of go through the gate i don't know why but it's just what my preference is oh it's a little slippery out here now that the snow is melting oh boys Yes, that's you, Jiminy. Shall we start with Jiminy Cricket? Boss Hoss, Arlo. Well, you guys are dirty. Way to make an appearance. Hi, baby. Oh, little itchy face. Okay, let's start with Jiminy Cricket since he is the OG. He is my first horse, my heart horse, and my forever horse. He will never go anywhere. We have done so much together over the years. I can't even begin to explain all the things we've done. I actually have though, because I did a My Equestrian story. So if you really want the down low, check that video out. I'll put it in the description too. So Jiminy is my 23 year old Appaloosa gelding. He's registered. I bought him when I was a teenager. And like I said, he was my first horse. <laughs> so he is a leopard spot. That's the color of his pattern. And the breed is Appaloosa. Jiminy is about 15.1 hand. So he's a wonderful size and he's stockier so it's great. He has the smoothest canter in the world. Zazu over here is a close second, <laughs> but Jiminy's canter is amazing. He likes to do everything. Jiminy will literally do anything. I mean, I've done barrel racing with him, jumping, fox hunting, tons of trail rides, camping, endurance, anything you can honestly think of, he's done it. He is a very special boy. And like I said, he will stay here for the rest of his life. Jiminy honestly does not have many weaknesses. I would say the only thing, once you start trotting and cantering, he wants to keep trotting because he likes to go, but he'll stop and listen. He's a super good boy, beginner safe, bomb proof type horse. It just cracks me up. He's like, okay, once we trot and canter, I don't really just want to walk. <laughs> so funny. And then we have Smooshu. <laughs> Mushy, what are you doing? You go boy? Mushu is the cuddliest, smushiest one here. Yes, you are. He's a big baby. He's a big baby. His mustache is growing back. Ah! <laughs> you are crazy. So they graze their mustache. So they graze their mustaches down in the summertime because they're on the grass, and then they'll slowly grow back late fall and winter. So it's coming back. We're getting it. So Mushu is a four-year-old Gypsy Vanner. He is registered and he is a cob and he is about right around 14 hands, maybe a smidge under, and he is well built and heavy set. And that's how he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be strong, short and stout. He's a traditional cob. So those are the characteristics of the breed. I feel like he got spit on my face. Now, a lot of people will be like, well, I thought he was an Appaloosa because of his pattern. So basically he's just a silver bay with a lace blanket. And he does have the modeling around the nose and the face, which basically look like freckles and he has striped hooves. And some of those characteristics are shared with the Appaloosa as well. And the reason he has those characteristics is because he carries the LP gene, but different breeds can carry LP, not just the Appaloosas. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, Mushu was just started under saddle at the end of June. And like I've said, we've just been working on his foundation. He's overall a very calm, collected, sweet and willing horse. I like his gates. He's very, very wide. So it's different for me to ride because I'm shorter. And I'm not kidding. I am doing the splits when I'm riding him. Be nice to Zazu. <laughs> but this winter, we're just going to focus on walk, trot, canter, pole work. If we get a good snow, I plan on hacking them out. Otherwise, I'll wait till probably spring or early summer and we're gonna do a lot of trail riding. So those are my plans for him, is just to continue working with him, take him a lot of places, expose him. He is an amazing, sweet little guy, the cutest horse in the world, and I absolutely adore him and love him. But I just decided that I'm already keeping Jiminy and Bagheera forever, and then I'm not sure about the foals and all of that. I just can't keep every horse, and I have to stick to my mission. So I did decide that I am gonna move Mushu along 
when the time is right, but it's not gonna be now. He's a really special horse and very unique and fun. Yes, you're very cute and sweet. Hi, Jiminy. Then we have Zazu. He's so cute. Zazu is such a cool horse. So he is probably, I haven't even stuck him yet, but I think he's around 14 one. So he's a smaller horse, but he's stockier and he's a gated horse. So gated horses basically move differently. They can pace, they can rack, different gait than just walk, trot, canter. But he will essentially walk, trot, canter, gallop, and he does a little bit of a fox trot too. But technically, Zazu is considered a spotted saddle horse. And he's 13 years old. He absolutely loves the trails. He is, no joke, my favorite horse to ride on the trails here because he'll ride in a group, he'll ride out alone, he'll lead, he'll follow. He's just so even keeled. He's not spooky. His canter is like butter. Like I said, it's comparable to Jiminy's. And I just feel so comfortable and safe on him. When I ride Zazu, I feel spoiled. Like he just gives me his all and the best rides ever. And like I said, he's just, as far as horses go, so safe. You are a sweetheart. So he's doing lessons right now. I'm riding him. So that's just my plan is just to enjoy him. And Mushu's head. <laughs> what are you doing? Are we not talking about you? Are we not talking about you? We had so much fun since I got him in May. We went on the beach ride. We've done some camping trips. He went to a few shows. We just had the best, the best time. I consider him a confidence booster because like I said, he doesn't ever do anything like wrong per se. He's just such a doll. <laughs> Big Gaston next to Mushu. My goodness, Gaston, you look very large. <laughs> so this is pretty much what they do besides you know when we're working with them which is often like we make sure to keep them active but they love to just hang out and chill too Gaston, we need to talk about you you big beautiful boy tall dark and handsome okay so let's talk about mr gastaroni here gaston hi baby we're talking about you how cute you are yeah we're talking about how cute you are he's like i'm just gonna eat my hay get it get it Gaston is my 12 year old Canadian horse. <laughs> what is he doing? He was imported from Canada and I've had him for over three years now. So when I first purchased him, he was broke to ride and he drives as well. I haven't driven him myself, but he does drive. And he was pretty green when I got him. Like he didn't know how to pick up certain canter leads and he was very rushy and forward, not balanced, but he was a good boy. So I spent a lot of time just getting him back into shape and working with him, giving him more of a foundation. And then he's just such a gentle soul. He started doing lessons in the program and now he does everything. He's done some cross country, jumping. He's gone on tons of trail rides, camping shows. He's just a fantastic horse. When I say Gaston is a good horse, I mean it. Like he is tall, like 16 hands, 1300 pounds. And he is just so good. The Canadian horses are known as the little iron horse because their hooves are so strong, which I'm gonna show you his hooves, that they're similar to the strength of iron is what they say. The students absolutely adore him, plus the adults here, because he's just so fun to ride. He's big, he's beautiful, he's calm, he's safe. Honestly, such a good boy, I love him. My plans with him will be to eventually move him along. I've had him here for a while. He's just so good, it's hard to let go, you know what I mean? But yeah, he's been doing great. I purchased him private sale. Oh yeah, I should probably talk about where I got the other horses. So Jiminy, Zazu, and Gaston were private sale. And Mushi was private sale too. And I purchased him sight unseen. So that was a risk, but he wasn't started or anything. I trained him myself. So I was slightly more comfortable purchasing him sight unseen because I knew he hadn't been started yet and most likely wasn't ruined yet. <laughs> a lot of times people think I get a lot of my horses from auctions. And I do get horses from auctions, but a lot of them are also private sale. And to be completely honest, when it comes to negatives about the horses, there's really not any. They are all just so sweet. Every horse has their quirks, but nobody does anything crazy here. Like nobody just bucks or bolts or spins or is spooky. Like there's none of that because we work with them so much and they know that they're safe here. All right, next up we have Mr. Arlo. Everybody is just so hungry. Yeah, he's a good boy. Hey baby, hi. You are so sweet. So Arlo is my nine coming 10 year old spotted saddle horse. He's also gated like Zazu and he is 15 hands and pretty stout. What you doing? So Arlo has a striped mane, so does Zazu, which is really cool, multicolored. It's beautiful. And he is considered a gray Sabino. 
So that's his color. Oh, I forgot about Zazu. So Zazu is a buckskin Tobiano. <laughs> He's like, you didn't forget about me. I forgot to say what color you were. So Arlo loves to trail ride. He's very safe and steady on the trail. He moves out more on the trail than in the arena. And I would say he's definitely more woe than go, but he's not spooky. He's super sweet. In the ring, he's a little bit slower because I think he just prefer to be on the trail, but he's still really good in the ring as well. As long as you just give him some encouragement and some leg, because like I said, he's more woe than go, but he'll pop over a cross rail and he'll do poles. You just got to encourage him to move forward. He's the other one where I just want to have fun and not worry about a thing. I'll just hop on Arlo and just enjoy it. And my plans with Arlo is he's been doing lessons, but I really truly believe that horses should not just be stuck in a lesson program. Here it's different. We do a variety of different things. They're not just stuck doing one discipline or going around in circles constantly. Like we're doing different things and going out on trail rides and all of that. But Arlo deserves his own person and I will be looking to sell him this spring, probably along with Gaston. A few people have said like, what about Kyle? Isn't Arlo his horse or Kyle needs his own horse? And I just want to talk about this. I brought it up before, but it's a good thing to bring up. People think that Kyle is an equestrian. And while Kyle is the most amazing horse husband I could ever ask for, he works so hard and does so much for us and the farm and the horses and myself. And I absolutely love that. However, Kyle is not a horse person. He now knows a lot about horses from, you know, living this lifestyle and from everything we do, but he doesn't want his own horse because Kyle, I think this year he's literally ridden three times, the camping trip and a couple trail rides. That is it. He has never just come out here and been like, I want to go for a ride. Like when we're at the farm, he only wants to ride if we're doing a trail ride or camping, which is totally valid. In other words, horse ownership should not be taken lightly. If you are not going to put in the time, energy, effort, and money into that horse, you should not buy one. Now, of course we're married. So it's like, you know, expenses. We already have the farm, all of that. But the reason we're saying he's not going to get his own horse is because that horse wouldn't get the attention because Kyle has other interests. Kyle likes to hunt. Kyle likes to work on cars. He has a car collection. And that's why I bought him a Corvette instead of his own horse. Now, with that being said, we are sometimes looking for horses that could be suitable for Kyle to ride when we do go on trail rides and all that. Right now, Arlo and Gaston are horses that he can ride when we trail ride. But of course, like I said, I'll be moving them along. So we're always going to want a horse here that he'll be able to hop on and ride too when we do go on those trail rides. People always say, what about Belle? She's really big. Belle is hardly broke to ride. So until I get a better feel for her and she goes through all of her training, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, then we'll see. But as of right now, she is not suitable for Kyle because he's still a novice rider. Now we're going to head over to the mare's paddock and talk about the babies, Belle and Bagheera. Hello. Hi. Hi, Ariel. How are you? How are you? He's all muddy. Okay, let's talk about Miss Ariel. What you doing? Hi, Bagheera. Itch in your head, you sweet girl. Ariel, your coat is so fluffy. Everybody is just munching. Hungry, hungry. Look at you. Look at you. Hi. So let's talk about Miss Ariel here. So she is my now seven month old filly and I purchased her from an auction and she was unhandled. So basically with her, we went through her initial basic handling. And of course, we're still working on that. She caught on, <laughs> really? She caught on very quickly. And it was just a really awesome experience. She taught me a lot because I had never worked with an unhandled foal previously. So it was just such a cool experience. And it taught me a lot. She taught me a lot in a very short amount of time. So at this point, she is pretty halter broke. She's good with grooming and basic handling. And overall, she's definitely more of an introvert where Ezzy is much more exuberant and we'll talk about her in a second. So she's essentially a draft cross foal. And my plans with her are just to continue working with her. And then eventually when she's three, we'll start lunging and doing more. Stop, you goofy. Oh my gosh. We'll start um, doing more saddling and lunging. And then when she's four, we'll actually start her under saddle. So we got a while to go, but that's my plans is just to get her started and then go from there. Okay, we can finally talk about you, Esmeralda. Oh boy. 
and you have quite the story to tell. Almost everybody knows who Esmeralda is, and if you don't, highly recommend watching her series, like her playlist. So Esmeralda is the first foal that was ever born on my farm. She is now five months old and she is a Belgian Clydesdale saddlebred cross according to DNA. So she was my mystery foal. I purchased her mom at an auction and surprise, she gave birth to Ezzy and it was just an incredibly magical experience and honestly, one of the most exciting days of my life when she was born. Yes, it was very exciting. Ezzy has the best personality. I mean, I can't even describe how bonded I am to her. I mean, she is just, I don't know, she's so special. You're just so special. And she's huge. For a five month old, she is gargantuan. I'm very curious to see how large she's gonna be when she grows up, but she craves attention. Where Ariel, like once you go up to her, you can pet her and she likes that. But Ariel also needs more of her space, which is why some people are like, well, Ezzy gets more attention. Well, no, Ezzy just comes up into your space no matter what, <laughs> where Ariel needs a little more calmer energy and you can't be quite as handsy with Ariel. Where Ezzy, oh my goodness, she just, she wants it. She wants you to be all over her. She loves to be fussed over. That's you. Mwah. I love her so much. So again, same thing, my plans with her, same as Ariel. My ultimate dream with Esmeralda is for her to pull me in a sleigh one day. That is my dream with her. I just think she would look so beautiful once she's mature. And yeah, that's the goal. But of course, we're going to do rides, trail rides. I hope to ride her on the beach one day, jump. We're going to do everything. We're going to do everything together. I love you so much. And I love Ariel so much too. It's just, it is different with Ezzy. Not that I love her more or anything like that. It was just a whole different experience. Like I can't even explain the emotion I felt. Even just thinking about it. Like I will just start crying. Like thinking about the day she was born. Because it was so special. I'm sorry, I don't know what my problem is. But it, it really is incredible. Yes. You're not going anywhere. So yes. And she is a buckskin base coat. And she will go gray. She's going gray now. So that is her color. And we don't know your height. I need to measure you and Ariel again just to keep track. Okay, you have to let me go talk about the other horses too. Okay? Yes. My plans will also be to wean her this winter. So we'll talk more on that when it gets closer. But yep, she'll be weaned not super long from now. And this is Belle. This is Esmeralda's mama. I know most of you know that. But for those of you who don't, Ezzy, I need to talk about your mom. Okay? And Bagheera. Ezzy, you little stalker. <laughs> You're a little creeper. Look at you. Belle. Oh my gosh, your dapples are coming out so much more now that it's winter. Hi, baby. Okay, so Belle is massive, at least in my opinion. She is almost 16'2", just under, so she's 16'1". And right now she's like a dapple gray. So eventually she'll be white. She'll gray out even more. And Belle's around seven or eight years old. So like I said, I purchased Belle from an auction and her note said that she'd been ridden and driven and that she was used as a broodmare. So based off all of my analysis and working with her, it seems like she may have been started when she was even younger and that maybe she drove a little bit as he, but that she probably sat for a while because she is either not broke or extremely green and rusty. One of the two. Are you gonna nurse now? Okay. So she's either super green or she's not really broke. And either way. So we're just taking it slow. I've been doing groundwork. I've mounted her a couple times. I'm pretty much just waiting until Ezzy is weaned. And then once she is, then Belle is going to boot camp. Yeah, your mom is going to boot camp. And what I mean by that is Belle is gonna be in training. So of course, we're not just gonna, you know, run her into the ground, but we're gonna be working with her every single day, getting her in shape, tons of groundwork, then building up to mounting again, and then under saddle work. She's like, say what? Yes, ma'am. You have been a queen out here, but guess what? It is time to get you into shape. But she's honestly gotten into better shape. We've been doing, you know, groundwork and just things here and there and grooming sessions, but I'm really looking forward to getting her started again. And I'm hoping the weaning process goes smoothly. I think it will because I've been doing short sessions where I'll take Belle away and then bring her back. So that way it's a, it's already a slow weaning process. So it's kind of already started, but not really. 
Plus we have Auntie Bagheera here who we'll talk about. And then Ezzy also has Ariel and Ariel has Ezzy. So it's really great. Bagheera. <laughs> Bagheera. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Ezzy, I'm trying to talk about Bagheera. Okay, Bagheera wants to stuff her face. So that's what we're going to let her do right now. <laughs> But Bagheera is my 30-year-old Morgan Standard bred, and I've had her for a little while now, and she has been amazing. So she used to be an Amish buggy horse. I think that was pretty much what she had done her whole life. So I converted her into a riding horse, and now she just does a couple lessons here and there every week, and then I trail ride her. We need to keep her active. That's what's going to be best for her. She always comes up to the fence begging for attention. She wants to come in to eat her grain. She loves to be brushed and fussed over and she loves hacking out. She's sound and healthy. So riding her and keeping her moving is what's gonna be most beneficial. And I've talked to my vet about that, but whenever the time comes that she needs to be retired, then we obviously will do that when it's no longer beneficial for her to be ridden. But for now, no. <laughs> but for now, like I said, we're just keeping her active, but not overworking her. And she's just so happy. She really has changed over the last few years that I've owned her in such a positive way. And it's just great to see her. It's just great to see her thriving at her age. And I think she looks phenomenal considering. Ezzy, you just got snow on your face. You just got snow. So Ezzy and Ariel did seem to like the snow. They were rolling in it, but like I said, it's kind of melted now. Once we get even more snow, it'll be fun to see them run around in it. Yes, it will. But anyways, Bagheera is about 14.3 hands. So she's a more petite mare, but this mare goes. I mean, she is very forward and fast and she's been to shows. She's won some of the classes. I mean, she's excellent on the trails and for camping, for lessons, she's fantastic. I mean, I just love her. There is something very special about her and I'm just happy she's here. And like I said, she is going to be staying at the farm for the rest of her life because I cannot sell a horse that's her age. Plus, I really love her too. And obviously, I love any horse that I own, of course. I mean, that's why I purchase them because I feel a connection and I want to buy them. But most of the horses I get, I want to move along. Otherwise, I can't continue doing this. I can't find horses like Bagheera. I can't find horses like Belle and Ezzy and Ariel and Mushu or all of them. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't continue the cycle. And that's what I want to do because that's what's in my heart. That's what my mission is. Yes, so everybody is doing fantastic. And those are what my plans are for them within the next few months. Ezzy, Ezzy, <laughs> you are something, ma'am. Look at her, she looks huge. I absolutely am obsessed with her look, like her beard, her eyes, her little feather. Let me show them your legs. Look at these legs. Look at them. Those are thick for a five month old. Like these are fantastic legs. And that feather, look at it. You're so cool. You're so cool. Mwah. You're so cute. We need to say hi to Ariel again. Ariel, she's just so cute too. Love these babies. You're gorgeous too, ma'am. Just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Ariel, honey, hi. Yeah, Ariel is just such a doll. Aren't you, baby? I'm hiding from you, Ezzy. She's looking for me. Oh my gosh. Look at she's like, I'm right here. What do you want? I'm saying hi to your sister, please. Ariel, don't bite my butt, Ezzy. You are a sweet baby. I want to come over for some pets. I want to come over. Hi. Hi, honey. Oh, I love the fuzzy baby. I love it. You got some hay on you. Yeah, you sweet baby. Ezzy. No, Ezzy. Be, uh, uh, that's not okay. You don't just come and pin your ears at other horses when you're the one that isn't being pet. That's not nice. That's not. Back up. Good girl. Ariel wants love. You do, honey. I know. You're just a good baby. Ezzy. She can't handle it. You be nice. Miss Ariel wants lovies. Look at 
at that cute face. Such a good girl. Oh my gosh. What? What? This is my vest, ma'am. Oh, hi, baby, honey. I love you. <laughs> That's my headband. <laughs> Ariel, you're so funny. You getting me? And today I decided to wear my Mustang mauve lipstick, which is super neutral. I am very fair skinned, but I absolutely love this one. Honestly, at first I wasn't sure when I was looking at my lipsticks, how this one would sell because I personally didn't love, love, love it because I like bold colors. But now that I'm wearing it more, it's really rubbing off on me. And it is my number one seller out of the lipsticks. So check that out if you're looking for a stocking stuffer or for Christmas. And I'm wearing my Galloping and Glitter lip gloss on top of it. Honestly, coming out with an equestrian themed lipstick line was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I have been having a blast, mainly because people have been emailing me, telling me how much they love the lipstick. They've been sending me pictures and it makes me really happy because I just love seeing people enjoy the products and live their best life. So if you wanna support Free Spirit Equestrian, that's the way to do it. Spirited Horse Boutique, a link in the description and the comments. Well, horse lovers, I hope you enjoyed the update video on my nine horses. I love talking about them and showing them to you and talking about them and their future plans and i just really appreciate you tuning in so make sure you like comment share subscribe to the channel turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything free spirit equestrian and i'll see you next time